going on, everybody? Whoa, the big yawn already. Oh, welcome to the Off Base Podcast. The podcast carefully crafted on a daily basis to remind you to suck a fat one if you think you're the only one. You're going to find out that I'm not the only one in a little bit. Uh, I'm your host. I'm the Rocky Mountain no-name jackass. And it's 32 degrees in the city of Aurora. It doesn't feel 32. It feels colder. And it's 7.52 in the a.m. on Thursday, February 10th, 2022. What's up? How the hell are you? My wife's least favorite part of the podcast. We'll get to her. Ceremonial. All right. We're good. Let's roll. Let's get this fucking show on the road. Back to my therapy sessions. Yep. This will be a therapy session podcast. Marriage. Uh, before we get to that, though, I got pretty good sleep last night. It was great. But I did not get sleep yesterday. Good, good sleep yesterday. And I didn't do a podcast yesterday because of uh, something that happened between my wife and I, which I'll get into. Because usually talking about it helps me to understand things a little bit more. I haven't talked about it with her because I don't want to. Jeez, I gotta go fast. There's somebody coming up right behind me. Ah! All right. So, Super Bowl's coming up on Sunday. Uh, we're gonna have our neighbors over. I, I did invite our friends from Colorado Springs. Another big yard? What the hell? I did invite our friends from Colorado Springs to come up. And they were scheduled to do so, but then they, they canceled at the last minute. The wife's going out of out of town. I didn't say anything back, but I was like, all right, well, how come your you know your husband and kids they can still come up? But I don't know. Who knows? All right, let's get right at it. Because this it's, 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 this is on my mind. Let me get this out of the way first, and then we'll see what's left over once we get closer to base. So my stepson. He had a, a concert last night. He's in, the, he's in the concert band at school. They're actually going to New York City in March and performing at Carnegie Hall, which is really fucking cool. But he had a concert last night. And the first time that he actually told us about it, ever, was the night before. <laughs> when we sat down to dinner. First time. He was like, oh, yeah, I got a concert tomorrow. And we were both like, wait, what? So we start saying to him, you know, like, we're like, dude, you got to tell us. And he was like, well, I thought you knew. He's like, how the hell are we going to know if you don't tell us? Well, you get emails. And we're like, we get emails about, you know, the New York trip that you're going to, not about when your concerts are. So I guess the, the fact of the matter being is that, you know, we both went, the, the whole family went. I love going to his concerts, and we would have gone, you know, either way. We would have found a way to get there. But my wife, in particular, she needs she needs some lead time because she's in charge of the the clinic, the hospital, the clinic at work. So normally she works till like six thirty, but you know, in order to get him there on time, we have to leave our house at six, and I want to make sure everybody's fed before we leave because we know we're not going to get back. We got back at like. You know, 9, 9.15, and then we got to go straight to bed because we all got to get up early again the next day. So we got to plan these things out. So it's not that we were horribly upset, but the lesson that I was hoping that we would get across is you can't assume people know if you don't tell them. <laughs> you know, you have, to, you have to actually go through and do the communication, especially now that he's getting older. And here's the funny thing. The funny thing is, is he has absolutely nothing else going on 
like extracurricular wise at school right now, except band. I could understand if he's you know, playing a sport, he's got a job, um, he's involved in, in other clubs, he's just doing things around school, but this is the only thing that he's doing. So it's like, why would you not tell us in advance that uh, the only thing that you're doing? Other, other than this, he's just, he's got video games, that's it. So it's like, dude, just communicate, right? And that was the point that I wanted to get across. So after he told us that and we had our reaction, which was, well, when were you going to tell us? And then he's trying to dance around it, talking about, well, you, you normally get emails about this and that. My wife pretty much took the lead on the conversation and he started to, I could see him, he was starting to get angry about it. And my, I guess my whole point is, uh, well, look, fine, if you're angry you know, whatever, work through that. But the fact of the matter is, is we need to communicate to him that you can't just assume that we know what's going on. And then all I was going to be looking for from him was an acknowledgement, like, okay, I'll do that in the future. Uh, if you, if you went ahead and apologized even better, like, sorry, I didn't tell you before, which is what you should do. But I could see he was starting to get angry. So the, my whole point was, well, let's just make sure that he gets, gets the message then we can move on from there. <clears throat> so my wife kind of was dominating the the conversation, and then I went to um, to chime in just to get that point across and make sure that he understood going forward. Tell us when you have shit going on, especially when this is the only thing that you're doing right now at school. And she kind of she kind of. Um, like gave me a, a sign I could tell by her energy that she didn't want me to jump in. Um, so I stopped. And a lot of times I do when it comes to stepson. Because that's that's her, you know, it's her son. It's her biological son. It's not, he's not my biological son. And it would be nice if she allowed me to do that, to step in. Especially now that he's getting older. He's in his, he's in his teens. Um to hold his feet to the fire a little bit more, you know, and again, the point is not coming down on him hard. The point is get the message, acknowledge it, uh, hopefully apologize for not telling us and then, and then don't do it in the future. But from my vantage point, the way that she was dealing with him was she was just babying him again. And I'm like, fine. All right, fine. You want to, you want to step in? You want to baby him? Go ahead. You don't want my perspective. That's fine. Um, because what, like I said, what am I going to do? That's, that's her son. He's not my son. Uh, I guess I, I, I feel like we should have uh, an equal say in things, but she, def she has defended him so many times when I push him on, on topics that I'm at the point where I, I give up. I'm like, all right, fine. Grow up. He can be a pussy. Well, who knows if he's going to be a pussy or not. That's just the way in which it's, it goes in, in my head is that if you don't, you know, toughen up a little bit. I don't know. Again, uh, just just to reiterate that, that last little point, I'm just bringing to the table the way in which my psychology works, which is, yo, you know, get a little bit of a talking to so that you understand. But it just seemed like from my side that she was babying him. Uh, and she was obviously upset. Not horribly upset, but just you could tell she was frustrated that he's not communicating with us. And like I said, she has all kinds of things that she has to rejigger at work. Um, she left work, what, it was about maybe 5, 5.15 and got home. She still, she told me, she was like, if I stay there, I would have had, you know, two more hours worth of work done. So work to do. So she has to, at some point, you know, do it in the future. It's not like there's this work that all of a sudden, because you skip out on it, it's gone. No, she still has to do it. So I could tell in her head that she was frustrated by this. And she didn't come down on him for whatever reason. Like I said, it just seemed from my perspective that she's still babying him. If she would have come down on him, held his feet to the fire, then I think everything would have been fine. That's what I was going to do, but she stopped me from doing it. Like I said, energetically she, she did that. And, and she stopped me short when I was uh, reprimanding him. So I think now what's going on is she wanted to lash out at him. Not, not you know, in a horrible, really rough kind of way, but just wanted to get out. 
and get it out in the open. Be like, yo, dude, I have, I'm in charge of 400 people. <laughs> you got to tell me beforehand so that I can set things up. But she didn't. She didn't lash out on it. So the, the conversation finished. Uh, my son and my stepson, they dispersed from the table. My wife's talking to my daughter. They're talking about something. And she turns to me and asked me a question about what they're they're talking about. And I answered it. And I don't want to get into specifics here. I'm going to stay general on this one um, for, for my own reasons. So she asked me a question about what they were talking about. I answered it. And they started chatting more about it. And then she turned back to me and asked a, another question. It was related to that. But she knows is a sore topic with me right now. She knows that it's a sore topic. And she was like pressing me on it. And I felt attacked because it's a sore subject. And I said to her, and I said to her, I was like, hey, what are you doing? Why, why are you coming at me like this? And she was like, what? Just answer the question. She's like pushing me on it. And immediately I'm thinking, all right, you're doing this because you wanted to, to lash out at, at your son. For some reason you didn't, so now you're doing it to me. And she kept pushing the, the, the question. And I was like, yeah, I don't want to have this conversation. She's like, no, no, come on. Blah, blah, blah. No, I'm like, no, just stop this. Why are you doing this? And she didn't want to answer why she was doing this. She kept asking me the question. I said, I don't want to have this conversation. And I got up and, and left. And again, I, I felt really, really bad about it. My, my feelings were hurt. I, was, I felt attacked. I didn't know why she was coming at me with that, that attacking energy, why she chose that particular topic that she knows is a sore topic with me. So I was like, man, fuck this. Man. So we haven't been on the best of terms the, the last couple of days. And, that, you know, that that incident just caused me, I didn't want to, I don't want to be anywhere near her. Like she came to bed and I had gone to bed early, uh, like half hour before everyone else. Cause I was, I was tired that day. But when she came to bed, I just woke right back up. I couldn't fall asleep. And I just, I just went outside uh, to my computer and fucked around. Got a horrible sleep. I, I hate it when, when she and I don't get along. That's when I get my worst sleep in the world. Um, in the world. <laughs> well, yeah. What, what are you going to sleep on Mars there, jackass? That's when I get my worst sleep on Jupiter. Uh, it's when I get my worst sleep, and I just, oh man, I don't know why, why she was doing that. I don't know how to, to bring it up to her. This is the first time I'm airing this out, which is always good for me, because maybe I can see her her perspective. But from my perspective, it was just, it was it was misplaced anger, and I don't know why she uh, continues to baby him on topics like this. She didn't need to. It wasn't like a, a huge one. Now, if the kids, you know. When he gets his license, if he wrecks the car, you come down on him ultra hard on something like that. But this was just a minor one. It's just a little push. Like, hey, you know, this is the, this is one of those instances where we're molding and shaping. Communication is big. Here I am talking about making sure the kids have good communication, and, and I don't have good communication with my wife right now. So that's the issue. That's the that's the therapy session I'm going through now. So, and the funny part is, is that uh, I don't mind. There, there were times in the past where, you know, just out of, out of spite, um, I would uh, respond with anger, passive aggressive anger towards her. You know, like for the next day or five <laughs> until the issue got sorted out. But this time, you know, I don't want to be passive aggressive about it. Just at some point, I'll find an opportunity to bring it up. But I don't have any any desire right now to, to connect with this woman. Because it was one of the first times where I I was like, dude, you were in my in my head, I was like, why this is just mean. Why are you why are you doing this? The way the questions that she was asking me and the way in which she was asking it of me. And I know you're probably wondering, my two podcast listeners out there are wondering, well, what was it? What was the topic? I don't I don't want to get into it. It's just it's a sore subject with me. 
Anyway, glad I at least got it out here. Hey, if she listens, hey, wife, hopefully we can talk about this. Because I'm trying to understand your perspective and why you would do that to me. And I'm not getting it. Particularly when I asked you to ask if we could not talk about it and then you keep pressing it. No, 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 come on. Tell me, why am I that? No, I don't want to talk about it. Plus, it's in front of the kids. I don't know, man. I don't know. <sighs> so, what are we? We're about halfway home? Yeah, about halfway home. trying to come come at it and see what you know what was going on on her side why what she said she also had has been having an issue with a person at, at work uh, which she which she and I talked about when she first walked in the door before before dinner and then before this whole thing happened uh, it's been somebody she's having a, an issue with for a while so I don't know if that was coloring uh, the way in which she behaved towards me, but it certainly didn't feel fair on my side. I felt unfairly attacked. And that's the other thing, too, that I really like about talking through like this. You know, growing up in the generation that, we, that I did, that we did, people who are the similar age as I am, uh, and and the background, too, the Catholic background. You don't, you don't talk about how things make you feel. You sit down, shut up, <laughs> and move on. Parents are always right, right? So you don't talk about how you how you feel. And that's where a lot of my early relationships with women were just horrific because I had no idea how to talk to them. I could tell them all the good stuff, but I couldn't tell them stuff that bothered me. It wasn't until I got into my uh, mid to late thirties where I could finally do that. I'm like, yo, I gotta, I have to, actually, I gotta get this out of me. I can't hold on to this. So. What's nice about you guys, uh, you two podcast listeners, um, being my my ears right now is that it it helps me to to talk about and pinpoint exactly what you're feeling. It'd be fascinating. I thought, I always thought it'd be fascinating. Not always. Once I started doing it, I thought it would be fascinating for uh, schools to be able to to teach kids a class on, on communicating, particularly... Uh, your feelings because whenever you do it in a relationship and you're able to get that stuff out on the table in an open and honest way not judge each other just hear the other person's perspective then you can come to a nice common ground and move forward because as as many of you know out there I'm not the only one I am a jackass but I'm not the only one oftentimes when couples fight it's never really about the issue that they're fighting about. It's about something that happened previously, in which you, you know, one of the one of the sides feels slighted, and that's what you have to you have to unpack and you have to work through. I'm not saying anything groundbreaking here, but the fact of the matter is, is that even when you do start to unpack it, people have a really hard time recognizing, yeah, what exactly was it that I was feeling, and especially as a guy, you don't talk about. It. What, what your feelings are, you, you push them down, <laughs> push them down, way down, that's why, uh, this is not my theory, but uh, it, it's, that could definitely very well be why women live longer than we do, is because they get that stuff out of them, now I will say this, women aren't perfect at it, um, because a lot of times they'll say, say, instead of using feeling words, like I said, I felt attacked, or you could say, I feel sad, or I feel angry, right? those are feelings, but when you just come along and you say, well, I feel like you did this because blah, 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 that's not, a, that's not taking ownership of your feelings, that's just you, in a roundabout way, going through and playing the accusation game, <laughs> and I'm not saying guys don't do it as well, but I, I've noticed over the years that women tend to use that language more than men do, and thereby avoid identifying their feelings as well. Anyway, uh, I guess there's me just trying to even the, the playing field, even, even the, the battlefield out. But it really shouldn't be a, a battle. It should be an opportunity to try to, to come together to understand 
share the responsibility and then move forward. That's usually that's usually the name of the game. But being able to put a, a finger on what exactly I'm feeling is has been challenging, as I imagine it is with everybody else. Because a lot of times when I have when she and I have had disagreements and I stop and I take that step back and I say, Alright, give me a second, let me try to figure out what I'm feeling. I actually use those words. I say, give me a second, let me try to actually figure out what I'm feeling. A lot of times it's just I think it's just anger, but usually it's something else. It's it's something underneath. Now obviously when she came at me, uh, like I was like I was describing earlier, um, I could easily have identified that as anger because immediately I want to defend myself. But when I actually drilled down and pinpointed it, it was it was an attack. I was feeling attacked. So then the result of the attack is defenses go up, and okay, you're going to come at me. And, you know, I'm putting my hands up because that's what guys do. If you're going to attack me, you're going to come at me. Then here comes the fists, and I'm going to defend myself. But you know what? I had no. Um, no recourse or no no instinct to go on on the defense when she was doing that. I just felt attacked and didn't want to play the game. Very interesting, different reaction from me because I like when she and I get along. All right, I think I got enough of it out for right now because we're getting closer to base. Stepson and I are doing the asylum fit test today. I'm getting pretty excited about about that because uh, I'm starting to notice in my physique I still have plenty of stuff to lose around the midsection <laughs> probably a good 20 pounds from around there but from the chest up man I look fantastic my arms are, are looking great my arms will always look good but I'm starting to see some real nice striations developing in the shoulders and in the upper upper chest area which is great because as soon as I do get to the point where I'm shaving off the fat, well, those areas are just going to look that much better. So that's that's exciting. So I got that going for me, which is nice. What, what movie? I, I quoted it, I think, last week. It's Bill Murray and Caddyshack. When he's on the, when he's talking about his experience with the caddying for the Dalai Lama. <laughs> All righty, all righty, we're, here we are, making the turn, coming in. Haven't seen Moto this week. He's always a bright spot coming back through the gates. But work-wise, um, things are going very well. I've been very busy and very productive. We've got a very big project that we do every year in which we actually reach out to uh, past clients who we have built models for and asked them if they need any tweaks or whatnot because new data is going to be coming out in March. The National Association of Insurance Commissioners will release all the data they collect from every insurance company around the United States. And obviously our clients want that data. So to preempt that, so that we don't get blasted, with tons of requests in March, we actually do an outreach in February and knock out some of those uh, modifications ahead of time. It was, and this was something that I actually spearheaded, I think it was like back in 2012, 13, I think. So we've been doing this for a while. Morning. Morning. Have a good day. Thank you. All right, all right, all right. So needless to say, I'm actually excited to get back on that project and get to work. Oh, last night for dinner. There, I'll close on this because this was good. Uh, not a pork chop, but the commissary sells these pork ribs and they're not like baby backs. They're, they're bigger size ribs and they're not, um, what is it, St. Louis style? But they're bigger ribs. They actually look like, they taste like pork chops. They're like as thick as a, as a pork chop is in terms of the meat that's around the bone. And I cooked them up last night, just put them on the, on the griddle, get a, got a nice color on all four sides, and then stuck them in the oven for five minutes. And it was a, it was a hit. This is, this is one that I've never done before. All the, the kids liked it, except my son. My son doesn't quite eat meat yet. But I made, him some, made all three of them some mac and cheese to go along with it. And there is Denver in the foreground. Rockies in the back. Very, very bright morning this morning. 
which may be a good omen for the rest of the day. Maybe things will brighten up. Maybe I'll find a way to address what I need to address with my wife. And we can again get back on better footing and go from there. All right? All right, let's close it down. Wishing everybody a great Thursday. I'll smell you tomorrow.